monkeys And people say we monkey around But we're too busy singing To put anybody down Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Bump Monkey Mafia. I'm Frankie V, here with my broadcasting partner. See, rather good guy. He's back. Yeah. Wow. Officially? Officially. I don't like being put in a chemical clutch by a very large look, man. It looked like it hurt. <laughs> it hurt. And as always, in the studio with us, the smooth operator, Mr. Wall. And we are joined tonight by the first inductee to the Bump Monkey Hall of Fame, the war beast, John O'Malley. That's me, just in case you're wondering. What's <laughs> up, so, Mr. O'Malley? Uh, not much, not much. Got a full belly and uh, ready to talk a little wrestling. I love it. Wrestling. Full so, belly. So, you know, you saw the news today. Yeah, yeah. It's a big news. Yeah. Weird. It's, it's cool. Cool, especially being the first one. Yeah, I'm not following up. Everyone else is following in my footsteps now. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> so we call you the War Beast or the Hate Machine. I answered all of those. All of them? <laughs> yeah. Irish okay. Phenom, the yeah. Juggernaut. Um, I've reinvented myself many, many times over the last 15 years. So <laughs> You right. got to, though. Yeah. Right. Nowadays, you just got to keep. Got to keep up with the trends, man. I uh, just keep getting injured so I can get bored and come up with new things. <laughs> then when I come back. <laughs> so 15 years. You broke in the business in 2000, 2001? 2000. Started training in 2000. You know, right here in. Big Bad OKC with Tom Jones, Mr. Ebony. Woo woo. Yeah. Woo. Taught me the, the fundamentals. And then I uh, latched on to a group of guys, and I think I was maybe a month into training, and I started running the roads. Yeah. And I ran the roads like a madman every That's week it. all over all over the South. Now, you've been a mainstay. Like, when people think about Oklahoma independent wrestling the last 20 years, You've got to be yeah, one of the top three guys up. that come to mind. You, Brad Michaels, and uh, Aaron Neal would probably be another one up there as well. Yeah. Um, Angel. I Angel Williams. Yeah. Angel Williams. I mean, you're talking guys that are still getting in and, you know, are as good as what they were day one. People come to shows and they're like, hey, I saw that guy at 10 different flea markets, 10 <laughs> different strip clubs, <laughs> and, and an Arby's parking lot. And actually what's funny is uh, I did stunt work before I got into wrestling, so it was just a natural transition. It was an easy transition, but I actually started talking to Bad Brad in the beginning of Facebook. Oh. Yeah. And so it was uh, like post MySpace? Yeah, yeah, just barely. Or Zanga. I, I it think was it, Zanga. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, I think I was, I was floating. I was like, do I like MySpace or do I like Facebook? That's, the, that's what I was doing. Yeah, I was but, all about the MySpace back in the day. <laughs> um, I still have it, and it's still active. I still have I still a, have mine, and a, it's still active. <laughs> A big John O'Malley MySpace page. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome because you could you could set your music. So you go, I'd go put my entrance music, whatever I was using at that time. <laughs> so it came and looked at my page. I had my entrance music, but uh, yeah, I talked to Bad Brad Michaels, and he you know directed me to Tom School, and then that's actually who the guys I started running around with: Bad Brad Michaels, the coach Gary Tool, uh, Big Money Chris Matthews, and Tyler Bateman, who's oh, now out in California Bateman. running rough shot over California. I love Tyler. Bateman. Yes, so did I. Except for when he kicked me in the face repeatedly. But I still love Tyler Bateman. But, yeah, those are the guys that I end up hooking up with. Though, all the guys you're talking about, you know, kind of give me the direction to, to be, to do what I did and be where I'm at. It's funny. I remember, I think I was, crap, fifth, maybe 14. I can't remember. It would have been around 14. I went to City Nights. My mom took me to Mid-South to City Nights. <laughs> and I remember you hear that saliva song, Click, Click, Boom, and I walked to you. Bad Brad Michaels, Tyler Bateman, and Ryan Davidson. Right. Instantly, you guys became my favorite, and like I listened to that song every day. And like the Dude, pro- did know, when we moved in, when you moved in with me, yeah, this full that, that was on his <laughs> <Literally>. night night <laughs> playlist. <laughs> I was gonna play that. Turn, Turn it off. off. I remember when Ryan Davidson won the Mid South Heavyweight Title. You guys turned on him. Oh yeah. Then, I was you like, you sons of bitches. I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you don't try to outshine us. You know when. The old school assassins, you're either with us or you're against us. Yes. You start running off and doing your own agenda, and uh, you pay the price. You know, we ran kind of that city nice thing, man. The OSA, you know, that was kind of, that, what, was probably the sixth or seventh reiteration of that group. Because, yeah. you know, the striker and all those guys are in it at one point. And, uh, but, yeah, we were just running rush hour. Like, they, they would tell us, 
don't get out and get on the mic. Well, man, as soon as you told me not to do something back then, That's I was right. straight to the ring, straight on the mic. Not even my time, just straight to the ring. Y'all were damn mic. good at it, too, though. <laughs> yeah. so. Brad posted earlier about Brad. Like, y'all were the guys that were the best at getting people just to hate you. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the job, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's so easy. I don't know why more guys can't do it. You know, I try to tell guys they come out and, you know, you're fat or you're ugly. If you have that presence, you can go out to the ring and not say a word to anybody and okay. still hate get you. that, still get that yes. hate. Still get that hate from those guys, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, yeah, so many people have to do the cheap heat. You know, you're, you're on welfare. You're stupid. You're poor. Look at me. I just, man, I just wanted to go out there, and I just wanted everyone to be either you're going to hate me or you want to beat me. That's, that was the thing. <laughs> and, you know, I had never been the body guy. I ain't never been the body guy. But I'll tell you this. When I'm in the ring, I hope that people believe that I'm going to kick somebody's ass because that's what I was out there to do. I've seen you legit kick someone's ass. Uh, probably several times. Ah, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed it. I have a... <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a scrapper uh, in and out of the ring. Uh, I've slowed down a little bit in my old age. I'm kind of more docile, but when I was younger and cocky and arrogant, and I'd throw a roundhouse kick, put your lights out, pin you, and walk to the back, and it didn't, yes. didn't even change my, didn't change my morning at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. A uh, certain old gentleman. Who's that? Uh, Nacho, Nacho Man? Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Walker. <laughs> Johnny Walker, Nacho Man Johnny Walker. <laughs> You yeah. beamed him square in the side of the head, and that dude was lights out. Yeah, and then I uh, put him in the most vicious Boston Crab I think I've ever heard of. and Because uh, I made his feet touched by his ears. And yeah. and then when he finally came to and tapped, I got up. And he used to play on the old Mid-South TV show. And one of my favorite calls there was Tom Jones. He's doing commentary on there. And I'm mad. So I, I make him tap out, I get up, and when I get up, I just soccer style kick him in the stomach. And Tom goes, I ain't never seen someone so mad about getting the win in my life. <laughs> uh, so I pissed I won. So, so angry I won. I can't believe I just won this. <laughs> so, man, what was that definitive moment where you're like, I'm going to be a professional wrestler? Uh, you know, 12 years old. I grew up in uh, rural Louisiana, very, very, very small town. Me and my best friend, he had a birthday three days after mine, which is funny because now my best friend now has a birthday three days after mine. I just, I guess I click with people like that, you know. But uh, our parents would get us, you know, back then in the uh, 80s and 90s, they toured. You know, they came through. They still ran more of a territory. Nice. Doug. I had Doug just walk in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but uh, they toured around, and uh, they would come to my, right after our birthday. Um, they would come to town, so we got tickets every year, and we were going to be a tag team. That was our plan. That was our plan. And, you know, he works in the oil field now. I went off and decided to live the life of a gypsy and roam around the country. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to be a wrestler. And that was, I was like, you know, I said I was going to do it, so I did it. And, uh you know, I still I got one more goal. I'm working on that, trying to get that done this year. I still have a goal. I want to go to Japan at least one time. But, but that's how I did it. Just me and my best friend growing up went to independent wrestling once a year, and we decided to be a tag team. <laughs> that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you got to – now you're running Mid-South. Let's talk about you're running Mid-South. Mm-hmm. You've been doing – lately you formed up tag team with Jake O'Brien, the Omega. Right. We saw you squash those two rookies that the uh, – what, what are they? I don't even remember what they're freaking called. Dynamic Shield. Dynamic, Dynamic Shield. Shield. Dynamic Shield. That was Shield. an awesome match. Those guys can move real well, but uh, they, 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 I mean, they've got really good ring work. I was surprised by them, but anyways, who cares? <laughs> um, now, this, this seems like it could be a pretty big deal. Uh, my goal is to make it a big deal. Um, Jake and I have talked about being a tag team. They were actually going to team us up a while back at IZW. Um, and then I ended up like having to have several surgeries, um, and so we kind of separated. And then I came back on the scene, and met Jake back up at Mid South again. Went back to him, said, "Hey, let's do this." And you know, we came up because there was a back in the day I was a member of the Irish Crinky team, and Jake being Irish also, we were going to take and run that, do like a an Irish Crinky team 2000 2K deal. 
And then he wasn't comfortable with that, which I understand. He didn't want to try to copy that gimmick. So we were going to be the Irish lifting team, and I couldn't figure out how we were going to run that in multiple places. So I sat down with Jake, and we came up, and we started talking, and we started throwing names back and forth, and the Omega is the one that stuck on the wall, and we figured that can go anywhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jake being O'Brien, six three, O'Malley. Exactly. The Omega. Omega. <laughs> exactly. Jake being, you know, six two, six three. You know, the guy's an ox. Yeah, yeah, young, yeah. athletic. I'm being old and not as athletic and just being a brute. <laughs> so, you know, our dear well, seen on a, run, run rough shot, you know? Oh, yeah. i seen on the page there that, that it was like the Irish lifting team versus Dynamic Shield. Yeah. I was like, who are either one of these people? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said, too. I was yeah, like, who are those like, guys? What was like, going on who, who are those guys? <laughs> but, yeah, I, I took it. I pitched it to uh, – to the office and the office was like oh well and they're like well we need we need you guys and we'll bring you in and then they fed us the dynamic shield and those guys are solid i mean they're out of toll size first time i've ever met either one of them never seen them work um went out there and, you know gave them the end and came to the back collected the payday and now we're uh, looking for more places to just basically go beat people up i'm not gonna lie i'm not i'm not gonna do flips i'm not i'm not gonna flop I'm going to punch people in the face. I'm going to punch people in the face hard. And then Jake, we're going to roll them up on the shoulders, and Jake's going to come off the top rope on them. So. I don't know if you heard our last podcast. I, I believe it was, uh, was it we wanted to see O'Malley off the top rope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Um, that's happened exactly one time uh, since I, I broke in, and uh, that was on Carnage. Ooh, and that was carnage. not even to the ring. That was – Outside the ring, um, it was a hardcore match uh, in Lawton at the high school, and he ended up. I ended up knocking him unconscious and breaking his face with a chair, and yeah. so we had to go home where we put him on a table. And for some reason, I thought it would be awesome to dive off the top rope onto him on the table. Set the table up way too far from the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I got up there. There were a thousand army guys there, plus about seven eight hundred regular fans there by the time i got up there it was too late to get down so i did it and that was it i resigned myself to that point to be like yeah i'm done yep i'm uh firmly ba- firmly planted on the ground at that point we'll never go back on those yeah <laughs> exactly. now ryan davidson you guys have been buddies for a long time yep we were buddies ro- running mates still roommates good. still talk to him quite a bit the dude's just tearing it up down in Texas right now, it seems like. He's a Booker T's right-hand man down there at ROW. Um, he just made wow. his Inspire debut last Sunday, and he's a monster. Uh, he's doing good good things. You know, I'm proud of him because, you know, when I met him, he was a young kid. He didn't really have a direction. No. Um, just kind of, you know, knew he wanted to be a wrestler. He was a Tom's roommate. <laughs> Tom yes. and Cody and Austin, I Austin, think was the other yeah. kid's name. They were all living together in an apartment, and – yeah, and you gotta go over there. And watch, was it Benny Hill? Benny, Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn. Benny yeah. Hinn. Tom. 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 Always watch Benny Hinn. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Come over. What are we gonna do? Watch Benny Hinn. Watch Benny Hinn. <laughs> it's slurp chocolate milk or <laughs> hot chocolate. <laughs> but yeah, Tom, I want to watch Benny. <laughs> and uh, you know, Ryan and I, after you know, after the guys, you know, the OKB, the group that I kind of ran with. Settled down a little bit more. Ryan and I started running the roads a lot, going back down to Texas. You know, we wrestled quite a bit together in Texas. And uh, we formed up one time with the 80s Express. <laughs> we had tassels and everything. But, no, man, that kid, he's doing such good stuff. I talk to him. I try to talk to him at least once a month, you know, just check on him, see how he's doing. Um, but, yeah, he's ROW. That's huge. Uh, if you haven't been to a show, that's a good show. I went down there. I was working down there in Houston not too long ago. And went over and watched the show. They had like 12 matches. Got them done in like two hours because they do them for TV taping. Okay. Yeah, oh, there was wow. no no playing around. It was match, match, match. Those guys had a well-oiled machine. And Ryan apparently is little driving that machine right now. So. God. That's awesome. We did some crazy stuff back in the day. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. In that apartment. Uh, my wife to this day is the reason why Ryan Davis is still alive from a Halloween party. <laughs> <laughs> she walked by his room and he was laying on his back, just drunk, drunk as hell, just throwing up, laying on his back. And she walked over and kicked him to his side. 
And so to this day, she claims Same to be Ryan, be Ryan Davis. The reason why Ryan Davis is still here. <laughs> well, there you go. You yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so, but yeah, he was a good guy. We did a lot of crazy stuff together, Ryan and I. Man, a lot of drinking. That's well. That was most of my younger life. It was a lot of, oh, a lot of adult beverages. <laughs> I've been there. So, what uh, what would be your biggest accomplishment to date? <sighs> to date. You know, I really haven't gotten my biggest accomplishment. The thing I've done the most is being recognized. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, oh, what yeah. you guys said. Um, the, my name's out there enough, like around here. Um, I, you know, it's a good feeling when you go to the state fair and people are like, oh, my, hey. You know? yeah. And you're like, I don't have any clue who you are or where I saw you. But they saw <laughs> me They saw me in Lone Grove or they saw me in, you know, out at the casino wrestling or something like that. But, you know, the fact that people, you know, know me, want to come up and talk to me. And, you know, I'm not one of those guys. You know, I will tell you, if I see you and I recognize you, that I try to duck and hide just because I'm usually there with my family and stuff like that. So we try to we try to take and keep those lives separate. But if you come up to me, I'll never be rude to you. I'll always shake your hand. I'll always take time to say hi. You know what I'm saying? We see each other at Walmart. Like, uh, every time I go frequently. to Walmart. Every time I go to Walmart. <laughs> Frank is Frankie's there every time I go to Walmart. With the fam. Yeah. This, the the fam, just passing. It's usually in the, the frozen food area, which is what I find even funnier. It's in the same spot. <laughs> it seems like every time we walk by, it's the same at spot. The frozen food. Yeah. We're both, we're both our sad lives just staring at TV dinners. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, you know, I want to, I want a little more recognition. I want to kind of, you know, I want to get on, you know, a little more national recognized. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my goal this year is to get a little, get out there more. Um, you know, I've been reaching out to the feds all over, you know, I'll, I'll go anywhere. Go I anywhere. That's, uh, I think that's where we've got. Where... Yeah. Like, we'll go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. We'll if you call me up, hit me up on Facebook, give me a date, I'll make sure I don't have anything on my calendar, and I'll come. You know, like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go out there and make your crowd go crazy because I'm doing 150 backflips. But I'll make sure whoever you put in the ring knew they were in a fight, and I'll make sure the crowd oh, yeah. entertained doing it. Now, you guys had an encounter down at IWR in Paul's Valley, what, about a month ago? You and Brent did? Yeah, you yelled at me as you were coming in the ring. Oh, uh, yeah, what did I yell at you? Because I yelled at a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there, I was front row on those bleacher oh. seats. You're like, you're not man enough to have that beard. Yeah. I was like, you're not man enough to wear those tights. <laughs> uh, actually, I am quite man. I wear tights often, sir. So. <laughs> Whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I try to keep the tie wearing to where I'm around other sweaty men, so that's uh, that's kind of the rule. But uh, yeah, I do. As soon as you said that, I was like, "There'll be your comments." Yeah, yeah. I do remember that now. I do remember that. Yeah, because when you have a beard as glorious as mine, other men's beards fall in they comparison. Fall you know, so yeah. So what is uh, what is John O'Malley like outside of independent wrestling? What do you watch? You watch WWE, you watch ROH, um, watch Japan. I do not watch WWE. I try to. So um, I become. I, it's. I become bored with all of the. It's kind of the pop go where it's all chopped up. I become very bored with that. I'm very much a Japanese uh, lucha. Um, I've recently got into Big Japan, but I watch a lot of New Japan. Um, I'm more old school wrestling too, you yeah. know. Masawa Kawada, those matches from like the 90s. I can watch those all the time. You know, Kenta Kabashi, you know, a lot of the ones that are gone now. Yeah. You know, you know guys I wanted to meet, but they're gone. Um, I've always been a fan of Vader. I can, you know, even though it's, yeah. his matches were all just being a monster, I can still watch it. It still entertains me because, you know, I, I know what he's doing. I understand. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> But yeah, that's what I am. Outside of uh, for for wrestling, you know, I've kind of gotten into the broken Matt Hardy. Yeah, I, I don't. It's a, it's something that just oh, I yeah, thought it was going to be stupid. Up. Thought it was going to be stupid, but it's really it really entertains me. Oh, okay. um, did so. you catch their tag team apocalypto? No, I, I haven't watched it yet. I watched 
The only thing I've seen from that is the kid pinning Spud. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I've seen from it. I haven't seen anything else. I watched it, and it was just like the way it was filmed. It was just like movie quality type thing. It was just back and forth. Mm -hmm. You didn't know what was going on, and then the hurricane shows up out of nowhere. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> have it, it was on last week's. <laughs> Uh, I'm a you know honestly the only thing I really watch from here like I have a hard time with TNA also um, it's just not my preference you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. but I'm a I love Lucha Underground I catch oh, yeah. that I catch that regularly I try to watch and, but it's also I'm a fan of a lot of the guys on that show you know what I'm saying you know I like watching their independent stuff you know I like trying to catch uh, you know PWG shows on the internet you know I'm I'm a fan of every every style. If you can do a million flips, good for you. Do a million flips. Just do them right. Be entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Don't do a million flips to do a million flips. You know, make them mean something when you're out there. Um, that's why, you know, I don't need to throw a million punches if I can make one punch mean the same as, as 15, you know? And so that's kind of how I've always lived my, my whole wrestling life. You know, if the crowd leaves – just as excited about my match as they did about the, you know, the 205 guys doing a million things, uh, I'm happy. So, but yeah, Lucha Underground is probably the thing I watch religiously and then New Japan. What, uh, so when you look back on the 15 years, what is the biggest name would you consider you worked with? <sighs> the, the names that I have worked with personally I mean, they're going to be guys. They're old school guys, but they're people uh, everyone knows. I've been in the ring with Vader. Yeah, I was like being a little kid right there. Um, I've been in the ring with Jerry Lawler, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Um, I've been on a million shows, you know, with a lot of them. I've been on shows with Dusty Rhodes and stuff like that. I honestly like sitting under the learning tree, though, when those guys are around, you know. Um, I've been in the ring with Dr. Death before he passed away. Um, that was that was cool. He was one. Of, he was a tag partner. Of uh, mine and five other guys, it was it was a five on five tag match. And, um, when Doctor Death tells me, "God, I'm glad I'm on your team, kid," that made me feel really good and warm and fuzzy <laughs> on the inside. So, uh, yes, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, those are, those are the kind of things. I haven't been in with any of the younger, you know, faster talent. <laughs> <laughs> so what was? Uh, my mind is drawing a blank. But he used to run around with all y'all. I want to say Bernie. Oh, Bernie Donderwitz? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. The Hebrew Hammer? Yes. <laughs> still he does. Did, he, he did still a works. match. Uh, he had to wrestle Vader. Uh-huh. And this was at the 10th and Pin over the flea market. Okay. And I remember him tagging out. And then he wouldn't tag back in. And he was like, no, dude, I don't want to go back in. <laughs> have, you, have you been in the room? Being in the room with Vader, I could understand. Yes. <laughs> I, I was, remember after the show, he was like, no, nah, dude, I'm good. I didn't, I didn't want to go back in. <laughs> I'm gold. I'm gold, man. <laughs> yeah. Just, just to give you an example of Vader, in the ring with him, he's bent over with one hand on the middle rope. He's bent over. And I'm kind of stalking him. I'm on top. I've been pounding him. And uh, I come walking up to him, and I rear back to throw a punch. And he hits me with like a quick just jab while bent over with his left hand and catches me right on the point of the chin and just froze me solid. Like, I could not move. I was completely just stunned for, like, five seconds. Just just froze, like, and it was just like, okay, this dude is ridiculously strong. Even, you know, and this is the end of the latter portion of his career, and he still, like, can just jab you in the jaw and just shut you down. Yeah, just shut you down. And then when he takes you back into that corner and starts laying the hammers to you, I know a lot of guys that just be like, no, I'm good. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm good. I, I don't want to fight no more. I've had that experience. <laughs> Let's not do that again. Me, I would have gotten in there a million times with it just because just it's Vader. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so we ask a question here on every <laughs> podcast we do with a guest. All right. It's called For an Object. For an Object. For an Object. If you could use an object, non-conventional, you know, kendo stick, sledgehammer, Chair, chair. chair. Any of that. Okay. That would give be you some your... ideas. Tim said he no, who was it? Yeah, Tim Double T Sport. Sport. Jerry Bossick said he would use a fourteen-inch floppy wiener. 
Bostick stole my idea. But Psycho that, Mike said he'd use a pink axe. That growing every podcast. Yeah. It's getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 12 inch, 13 inch, yeah. 14 inch sloppy weed. So any non-conventional weapon or an object. Oh, man, I've used so much weird random crap. Um, <laughs> I, I have used this, and it's going to be a non-conventional object. I used a 1991 three inch thick laptop like the old original old school laptops that are oh, like man. weigh 19,000 pounds <laughs> I used one of those that I'm at that would be mine because let me tell you I smashed Terry Montana in the head with one of those Terry Montana stopped him cold yeah he he just froze when I hit him in the head with that that would be because let me tell you that would stop that would stop a bull I think it would stop bullets <laughs> that would be my my non-conventional weapon a 1991 okay. laptop. The original <laughs> laptop. That's good stuff, man. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Now, nowadays, are you more inclined to help, like, the younger generation? Oh, yeah. Or is it... Yeah, once I finally got out of my own head, you know, I got a whole lot of uh, really quick when I first came in because, you know, I was with the right guys. So, you know, like, my first match was in Texas. I didn't even have my first match at Mid-South. Um, and I was real, really arrogant when I first broke in. And then now, looking back, I realize, you know, God, what a, what a jerk. Man. <laughs> Just, what a dick. Just a raging <laughs> dick I was. Um, and, but now, yeah, I'll, I'll go down to Mid-South School every, you know, if I have time. I'll run down there on, on their training nights and try to help out. Um, when I'm in the back, I try to watch matches to help guys. And by no means don't take my word as gospel because it's not. It's my opinion 100%. But, you know, I have been around. I've done a lot, I've done a lot with, of what people want to do. So I just remember, like, you know, back in the day, you did have that rep. And you're like, oh, yeah. This dude's a mean bastard. Oh, yeah. And after training one day, you're like, hey, man, you going to go eat lunch? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, for real, I was like, why me? What? It was like me, Ryan. Mm-hmm. I think Cody went. Yep. Uh, it was just like the coolest shit because all we talked was wrestling. Mm-hmm. And like, if you were really open to like giving some knowledge. And I was like, my thing that's is. the coolest shit, man. If you're open, I'm willing to give. I'll tell you, I can be a raging dick if you still, if you want to be closed minded and you don't want to listen. Do you have, like I said, do you have to use what I tell you? No. You don't have to use it at all. But if I'm willing to give it to you, at least show me the respect to, to listen to it. And so back then, even when I was a jerk, if you want to sit down and listen, you know, I'll talk. <laughs> so, and that's probably the reason why. And it sticks to me to this day is hip toss. Lay flat. Mm-hmm. If you set up, I'm going to kick you. <laughs> like that sticks to me to this day. Because you're going to, one, you're going to break your ass because you're going to land on your tailbone. And two, I probably got something I've got planned up coming in right behind that. And if you're setting up, I've got to stop and kick you in the face. And, and <laughs> well, that's exactly <laughs> you're always like, I'm like two or three moves ahead. Always, yeah. So it's just lay flat. Like. You know, that's a, well, probably one reason why I don't kind of mesh up with a lot of the younger guys is because, you know, I can, I can go out there and just do it. You know what I'm saying? I can go out there and if something goes south, I've got a plan. I've got a plan no matter what happens out there in the ring. Um, somebody gets hurt, something. I've got, I'll have got. i come up with something on the fly. And there's not a lot of people that can do that. There's not a lot of people that can walk and talk anymore, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and I, I've never had the best of memories. <laughs> I've never had the best of memories. And so I can't, like these guys that go a million miles an hour, there's no way I can keep up with that. Yeah. I couldn't keep track of that in my head. I have a hard time keeping track of that head when I watch other people do it. <laughs> so there's no way I could do it out there. You know, like, like we said, you were the big names when when I first got Started, in. Yeah. yeah. I remember doing a training match, and it was like Angel and Brad. They're like, hey, man, get in the ring. And I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm awesome, thanks. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 for real. And I was like, like the whole time, I was scared as shit. Yeah, but like at the same time, I was like, "Oh my god!" I'm in the ring with the OSA. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get my ass kicked. I mean, you know, the training matches were hard. I mean, I remember when I was going through the training matches. They're they're rough, and they're rough for a reason. It's you know, one, it's 
getting you in there, letting you know what it's like. Yeah. Um, you know, the training matches are never, they're always on the fly. So they're making you listen. Oh, shit, yeah, they do. You got to listen. Um, I did a 30-minute one with Ryan, and I've never been so tired in my entire uh, life. Yeah. Yeah, uh, believe me, I understand. Uh, I think my record was Michael Berry. It was 43 minutes. Ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, Ooh. 43 minutes long. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> and I was just, it was just a good feeling, like, when you got done. Yeah. Like, just, everybody that was there was, like, standing up, and you're like, this wasn't even in front of a crowd, dude. This was. And you know what? The crowd's so much easier than training. Yeah. If you can survive training, the crowd is so much easier. If you can get in there and go and do your thing and then get done, you can uh, – and you actually make it on the shows, your goal. Because yeah, it's Trace. so much easier out of training. Constant. Yeah, it's so much easier when you go in and you train it and all that. So, But, yeah, once you get out of there and you take that beating and you get that conditioning. The, so was there ever a point where, like – I don't know, like, for lack of a better term, like, you were accepted by the guys. Um, like, they did something to you, or? No, I cut a promo. Okay. They pulled us all out of the ring one at a time, and they were kind of making fun of people, and they made us cut a promo in, in front of a camera. And uh, I cut on this guy named Furball Rick. <laughs> I cut this promo on him. And I walked off the screen, and I had time left. I walked off camera, and... I came back, and uh, I know you guys are trying to clean up your act, but this is exactly what I said. I said, uh, I walked off the camera, and when I came back, I got right in the camera, and I said, you fuck. And that <laughs> popped the whole room, because I needed just a time filler. I needed like a five-second time filler. Uh, and I walked outside, and I went back down and started training again, and uh, Gary Tool came over the rail. We were at the old building, and uh, they were upstairs, and he looked over and he goes, Hey, what are you doing Friday night? I was like, nothing. He goes, all right, you're riding with us. And that was it. I, rode, I was on the road at that point. <laughs> yep, that was, that was kind of my thing that got me over, was that promo <laughs> and that <laughs> F-bomb at the end. And I ran with that forever. Like, my finish was called the F-bomb, all kind of stuff for the longest time. So <laughs> We did a show in Hugo, Oklahoma. And every year you go down there, there's a car hood. It says pro wrestling this way. <laughs> and it was me, Tom, Cody, Ryan. We all drove together. And they're like, Where are you going? I was going to run security. I was still training at the yeah. time. And we're on the back. Alpha Rot was going to be there. Eric Watts. Yeah, I was I remember. Were you there? I think I was there. The I, don't know if, I don't know if I worked that show, but I know I was there. I was always on the road. I never stayed They there. ran the uh, Angel Brad. I may have been you. They ran the S- South Texas Death Squad. Yeah. The STDs. Yep. <laughs> I, just, I remember that show with Eric Watts being on it. We're sitting in the back, and I'm just sitting. I'm talking to Cody. And out the corner of my eye, I see Brad get up and go across the room. I kind of think, what is he doing? Takes off running. Just lays the boot. <laughs> and I sold it. I went over the table, took the table with me. <laughs> and Brad stops, and he's like, and Angel's like, what'd you do, dude? <laughs> and like from then on, it was like that tension was broke. Yeah, like, I didn't have no. That's that's it, man. It, it's guys that fight it. You know, you know they say hazy's bad and stuff like that. But there's always going to be ribs oh, and stuff yeah. like that. People are always going to be messing with you. I mean, whether you've been in five minutes or fifty years, someone's someone's always green is a relative shade. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, you're going to be green to me. I'm green to Vader. Vader's going to be green yep. to, you know, Luthez. You know, it's yeah. always – green's a relative shade, you know what I'm saying? And so if you just get in there and just accept it, when the guys fight it and when you buck up, they're going to get ten times worse because now I know, oh, this pisses them off. I, uh, so now I'm going to just grind on you. <laughs> I saw a lot of wiener in the locker room. <laughs> no, and, uh, never. That's disturbing. It really wasn't flaunted. Well, they stopped flaunting after I touched it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we're not going over there. <laughs> so I'm just I, I've never been one. I'll say it was Seth. Seth Allen? I think it's it was. Yeah. Seth Allen. Seth, that didn't surprise me. He, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember the, the bat with the bat wing and all that stuff. Yes. Was was popular. Oh, uh, the brain. Seth, Seth Allen <laughs> gave... 
uh, seven, the brain in, in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And uh, <laughs> seven saw it coming and reached in his bag and scooped Tiger Bomb. Oh, and just no. his credit card swiped it with Tiger Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that didn't surprise me. That didn't surprise me at all. I was a, I was the guy that walked around. I always had a towel. And, you know, being the bigger guy in my belly, I would always tuck the towel under my belly so it looked like I was wearing the towel on the front. And I'd come up and talk to you while you're sitting down. And uh, after I, I, the other guys, I kind of ran the roads with uh, Seven and Aaron Neal and Willie Dodd for a while. Um we go to Arkansas a lot, and I would make sure one of them would talk, and I would turn around. And I wouldn't have anything on in the back, <laughs> so my butt would just be in someone's face the whole time. <laughs> and I'd just be like, and I would back up as close as I could, talk into the person in front of me, and see. Yeah, you're just gonna see that. That's just. It's a locker room, you know. It's a locker room. If you've ever played any kind of sport, it's a locker room. I had my kid uh, one of the mid south show, mid south shows recently. And uh, Caleb was like, I'm going to change over here. There's a child in the room. <laughs> but Barnes is like, it's a locker room. You're going to see cock. <laughs> I like, I Fair enough, bud. Yeah. <laughs> I understand that too, but I, I'm just like, uh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over here. I'm not going to do it in front of the kids. <laughs> I don't need charges. <laughs> <laughs> so you, t- you talk about all being on the road all the time. What all states have you wrestled in? Um, I've wrestled in Louisiana, Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Tennessee. Those are all places that I've, 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 Pretty I've impressive gone list. to. That is a good a lot of places, list. man. Yeah. That's Just, like one of the better lists that every time I ask that question yep. that I've heard. <laughs> Those people, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Texas. Yeah. Same place. Oklahoma, Texas. That's the same places in Texas and Oklahoma a lot. But yeah, and then I've wrestled all over those states, you know. Um, more to come. Yeah, that's, that's my goal this year, a lot more travel. Uh, the wife, family's not going to really appreciate that, but uh, they got to put up with it a little bit longer. I'm getting old, so. <laughs> you know, we have this conversation too. They always ask me, "Is Courtney cool with?" I was like, "This is like the one thing she does not give me any shit over." Yeah, it's like pro wrestling. I'll oh, just leave him alone. <laughs> just leave him alone. My wife's been good about it. You know, I do take time off. Um, my daughter's a national level cheerleader, and so I do take time off when she has competitions and stuff like that. I try to make sure there's nothing going on so I can be there for that. I mean, cool. You know. I don't expect them to come to my wrestling shows because they're not the biggest of wrestling fans. Like my my uh, kid hates to see me lose. One reason, um, but uh, they went to enough when I, they were younger. You know, when we first got married, my wife was pretty much a, "Hey, I'll come to the shows and stuff like that." Uh, That's just not her scene. She's just not into the people that are wrestling fans, <laughs> and no, nothing against them. You know, they're wrestling fans, and they allow me to do what I, I do, but it's just not the scene that. She wants to hang out in. My son eats dirt, so I'm pretty free. <laughs> you're, 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 My schedule's pretty those. free. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in there. You're gold. <laughs> well, brother, I appreciate you being on with us. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate the uh, oh, yeah. Hall of Fame induction. And uh, we, got a, we got a Hall of Fame one. dinner coming up in February. We're going to do this again. I'm always about dinner. It'll you be know, here at Earl's. <laughs> yes. Yep. Love Earl's. <laughs> yes, me. I do. I will eat Earl's anytime. All day, every day. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for having me, and uh, thanks for the induction into the Bum Monkey Hall of Fame. We love it, man. You can catch John O'Malley on Facebook. Whoop. At War Beast. You can also check out the O'Malley. Omega on Twitter and Facebook, right? Yep, at the Omega Tag Team. <laughs> On both of them, I keep and someone's, someone's firing firecrackers in here now. The the duck left and the firecrackers showed up. But yeah, it's at the Omega Tag Team. Go like us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, as we get more video and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. we'll be posting. I to that that picture you sent me was, I loved it. Oh uh, yeah, that was badass. He yeah. sh- he showed it to uh, me, and I was uh, like, y'all got some pretty great. sweet shirts coming out too. Yes, we've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, we're gonna have shirts for sale pretty soon. Go on there. Um, if you want a shirt, we have good ties. We can do one-off prints, stuff like that. So uh, let's uh, let's get us get this ball rolling for us. Yeah, yeah. All right. support the Omega. That's right, man, folks. As yeah. always, you can catch us on Facebook, YouTube. 
Twitter and SoundCloud. Uh, my apologies, we are a little behind on SoundCloud. <laughs> we're behind on SoundCloud. We're on there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, thank you for all the support. Thanks for continuing to like the Facebook page and, and do all that stuff. And we will see you at your next local wrestling event. Woo!